greetings to this remote worship service from St. Peter's Lutheran Church for Holy Thursday, April 1st, 2021. The sprinkling of the blood of sacrificed animals on the people ratified the Old Covenant and the people were forgiven. On Monday, Thursday, Christ on Monday, Thursday, Christ instituted a new covenant in his own blood. His body and blood, given and shed for us, are given us in the Lord's Supper for the forgiveness of sins. We sing the gathering hymn, number 431, number 431, Not All the Blood of Beasts. We sing stanzas 1, 3, and 5. On Jewish altars slain Could give the guilty conscience peace Or wash away the stain My flesh would lay its hand On that dear head of thine while as a penitent I stand and there confess my sin. Believing we rejoice to see the curse removed, why he bless the Lamb with cheerful voice and sing is bleeding love. Confession and Declaration of Forgiveness In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sins I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. We rest now in his peace and rise in the morning to serve him. Amen. Service of the Word Opening Versicles This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. We sing the Old Testament canticle, number 418, 
O Lord, throughout these forty days, stanzas one and two. These forty days You prayed and kept the fast Inspire repentance for our sins And free us from our past You strove with Satan and you won your faithfulness endured. Lend us your nerve, your skill and trust in God's eternal word. The Old Testament reading for Holy Thursday is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take, according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lamb at twilight. Then you shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintels of the house in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw or boiled in water, but roasted its head and its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. This ends the Old Testament reading. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judge ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This ends the epistle reading. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 14th chapter. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. And they began to be sorrowful and to say to him, one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread in the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This ends the Gospel reading. Catechesis Responsory We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. The Ten Commandments you shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The Apostles' Creed 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing the office hymn, number 636, Soul, Adorn Yourself with Gladness. We sing stanzas 1, 5, and 8. I pray you, let me 
gladly here obey you. By your love I am invited. By your love with love requited. By this upper let me measure. Lord, how vast and deep love's treasure. Through the gifts of grace you give me, as your guest in heaven receive me. The message for our Lenten series, Deepest, Truest Love at Our Lord's Table, from Mark 14, 12 through 26. In the name of Jesus, who gives us the gift of true love at his table, Amen. Our sermon text for this Holy Thursday is the account of Jesus eating the Passover meal with his disciples and instituting the Lord's Supper. Hear these verses from Mark chapter 14. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover, and when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful, and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This is our text. His death lay just ahead. He knew it. Jesus knew that his road had come to Jerusalem for the final time. Jesus knew that he would be betrayed by one of his own disciples. Jesus knew that he would be killed and yet rise again on the third day. This would be his final Passover meal with his disciples, and he would not drink a cup of wine with them again until the great feast of the world to come. And though there was sorrow, there was also a sense of earnestness and even satisfaction. Luke's Gospel records an additional statement of Jesus in this scene. As he sits with his disciples, Jesus says to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Luke 22, 15. 
The master earnestly desired to sit at table with his disciples, to be with them and among them. Jesus has been earnestly desiring to share this meal with them, and earnestly desiring to institute a new meal among them, the life-giving feast of his true body and blood. It is a feast of love. There is something wonderful about being the host at a great meal, something exciting and satisfying at a deep level. Maybe that's why some people dream of opening their own restaurant. And there's something wonderful about being hosted by a host who really wants to be hosting you. You've probably had the experience of being in a restaurant where the owner works there and really enjoys visiting with the guests and making sure they feel welcome and have what they need. Think of the anticipation and the hosting done by mother and father as their children come home for the holidays, or the excitement and delight of a guy who has invited his girlfriend over for a special dinner working so hard to make everything perfect, and then so enjoying the company of his beloved. On this night in Jerusalem, Jesus was not just hosting any meal. He and his disciples were eating together the ancient Jewish Passover meal, which already at that time had been celebrated among God's people for 1,500 years. Passover commemorated God's mighty rescue of his people from slavery in Egypt, finally striking down the firstborn in the home of the Egyptians, but mercifully passing over the blood-marked homes of the Israelites. It commemorated the time in history when God brought them out from Pharaoh's tyranny so that God himself might come and dwell among them they were the chosen people, the Lord was their host, and they were God's invited and treasured guests. Having come out of Egypt, God met with them in the wilderness, and he made covenant promises to them to be their God, and to dwell in their midst, and to bring them safely to the land that he had promised them. And Moses had sprinkled the people with blood, from the animal sacrifices, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you, Moses declared at the time. And the people ate and drank before the Lord. The book of Exodus even says that the people saw the God of Israel and that he didn't stretch out his hand against them. Communion, fellowship, nearness, a feast of love. It was clear already in the Old Testament that the God of Israel was a God who desired to be with his people, to be among them, and was a God that wanted to draw his people near to himself, to be their God, and to have them as his people. But the Passover meal and the blood covenant of the book of Exodus were not in themselves the end of the story. They also pointed forward to a coming day, to an even greater fulfillment of God with his people. They pointed forward to an even greater meal and to an even greater blood. They pointed forward to this night, Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday this night when Jesus ate his final Passover with his disciples. This is what the Old Testament Passover meal, this is what the blood covenant at Mount Sinai, this is what God's dwelling with his Old Testament people in the tabernacle, this is what all these things have been anticipating and foretelling. For here is Jesus, God in human flesh, earnestly desiring to host his beloved disciples, to be in their midst, to eat a meal with them. And here is Jesus instituting a new meal to be celebrated often among them, 
a meal of Christ's true body and the cup of Christ's true blood. For the time had come when the precious blood which would bring forgiveness would be shed for all sinners. And so the time had come to establish a new table, a new feast, a new and greater welcome, a new and greater sharing, a meal in which our Lord Jesus would be and abide with his people, pardoning their sin and hosting them in love. Jesus instituted this new and ongoing feast for his disciples and for us. We call it the Lord's Supper. Jesus himself is the host. He earnestly desires to share it with you. It is a feast of love. It is interesting that in our small catechism, with all its questions and answers, it does not make more of this. In the section on the Lord's Supper, the sacrament of the altar, the catechism emphasizes what this sacrament is. The true body and blood of our Lord Jesus under the bread and wine. It emphasizes what benefits it gives. Forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. It emphasizes what makes a person worthy to receive this meal, recognizing their sin and their need, and trusting in Christ and his promises in the sacrament. And the Catechism has some other important things to teach regarding the Lord's Supper as well. But one thing that it doesn't talk about, at least explicitly, is the love here in this meal. How much love we find here at our Lord's table. Our Lutheran hymns, however, are full of this truth. Thy holy body into death was given, life to win for us in heaven. No greater love than this to thee can bind us, may this feast thereof remind us. God descends with heavenly power, give himself to me this hour in this ordinary sign. On my tongue his pleasure receiving, I accept his grace believing that I taste his love divine. By faith your word has made us bold to seize the gift of love retold. All that you are we here receive, all that we are to you we give. Thy heart is filled with fervent yearning that sinners may salvation see, who Lord to thee in faith are turning, so I a sinner come to thee. In this holy meal, Jesus not only allowed sinners such as us to come into his presence and to receive in our mouths his holy body and holy blood, Jesus not only allows it, which is itself remarkable, but Jesus not only allows this, he delights to draw us near to himself and to draw near to us and to share this table with us. It is his table, and the Lord Jesus is truly here as our host. Your God who bled and died and rose again for you, attest to all of that, reminds you of all of that, here in this meal. He meets you here, he the host, you the guest. It is a feast of love. Throughout this season of Lent, we have been tracing the dimensions of God's enormous love and mercy for us in Christ. On this Holy Thursday, consider this. Because God is so rich in mercy, he gave you in Jesus Christ something that everyone in the world is searching for, something that we all long for, something that the poets have written about and singers have sung about for millennia. True love. True love is not just the stuff of fairy tales or sappy movies. True love is what we were created for, 
than what we will enjoy forever in the age to come. True and perfect love, a genuine connectedness to another, being known, being welcomed, belonging, being enjoyed, being cherished, being delighted over. Thanks be to God for all the love that we are shown by others in this life. That too is a gift from His hand. But true and perfect love in this sin warped world is found for us in Jesus. And it is here at this table and in this meal that our Lord Jesus meets us with all that love. This is not mere sentimentalism or romanticism, though there is plenty of both of those things in knowing Jesus' love. This sacrament is what you need and what you long for, true love. And what is amazing is that you have a God who earnestly desires your love too, and he calls you near to himself tonight and forever. That night Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. That's Mark's word. Matthew's gospel records Jesus' words in this way, I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Just a nibble of bread which is Jesus' body, just a sip of wine which is Jesus' blood. It's really not much of a meal, but in these small tastes, Jesus gives you his enormous love, along with his pardon, his life, and his salvation. And maybe it's appropriate that now, at this age, we merely taste and sip. For this meal and this moment of Jesus' presence and love in the Lord's Supper are a taste, a foretaste of the coming age, when we will see him with our eyes and we will dine as guests, as most welcome guests at his table forever. The wine will flow, the platters will be piled high, there will be song, there will be reunion, there will be fellowship and joy and laughter. It will be a place of true love. Imagine sinners like you and me, and God so happy to have us, singing over us in delight and joy. Perhaps on that day we will hear our Lord Jesus saying, Bring out the wine, bring out the fruit of the vine. Today is the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Perhaps on that day we will hear our Lord Jesus say, I have earnestly desired to eat this feast with you. Perhaps on that day we will hear our Lord Jesus say, A toast to true love. Come share that love here with me tonight, with one another, and with your Lord. Deepest, truest love at our Lord's table. Come and be hosted by the one who has been betrayed, and crucified, and risen in love for you. He earnestly desires to share this supper with you. Amen. Prayer of the Church Responsory Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my cry, keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you, 
When I awake, your presence will give me joy. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel, and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and the orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, learn, mark, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Triduum Service Monday Thursday's service ends with the prayer of the church to be picked up with the opening versicles of the Good Friday service. The Triduum Service Triduum refers to the structure of Holy Week services. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, or the Chief Easter Services, as one continuing service. Monday, Thursday begins normally, pre-service music, opening hymn, invocation. But because there is no communion with this service, it ends with the prayer of the church. There is no benediction, closing hymn, or post-service music. The congregation leaves in silence. The Triduum continues in the service of Good Friday. Good Friday's part of the Triduum begins with silence. There is no prelude, greeting, opening hymn, invocation, intro, or confession and absolution. The entire service is the service of the Word the center part of a normal service. 
beginning with the opening versicles and ending with the prayers. Again, there is no benediction, closing hymn, or post-service music, and the congregation leaves in silence. The triduum continues with the Easter service. Another tradition of the Lenten season that continues into Holy Week is the use of the declaration of grace rather than of an absolution in answer to the confession of sins during the time from Ash Wednesday through Good Friday.